Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to part two of our six-part Shadows Over Innistrad set review. Now, if you didn't join us yesterday, we looked at all of the white cards. Definitely check that video out. Today, we're going to look at all of the blue cards in this new set. We'll be back tomorrow, actually, with all the black cards, and we'll make our way through the color pie, culminating in all the multicolor and colorless cards. And then finally, we'll be back with a pre-release primer and get you ready for that pre-release. So if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, definitely a great time to do so. We get a lot of content coming out, and as always, and I just want to take a quick moment to thank all of the subscribers for helping us get past 2,000 subscribers. It actually, just happened yesterday. So next week, once we're done with all the set reviews, I will do a subscriber celebration, maybe open up some kind of weird product or something like that. Uh, so anyway... Let's get on with the set review. We got a lot of cards to talk about. First, we'll start with Aberrant Researcher, which transforms into perfected form. Now, if you watch kind of the old fly movies, you kind of know this is maybe the other half of the experiment from Delver of Secrets. This is definitely like Delver's big brother. <laughs> so uh, it's not going to be as economical as Delver, but it's a little more of a beater. So this time around, you're going to play this for four, for a three, two, unlimited, and that's just fine. And hey, you know, if you can transform it, get a 5-4 flyer, excellent. So uh, I'm more than happy to play this in limited. I think it's a little pricey for what it does in standard. Uh, there's just other cards out there that are a little better that can protect themselves in better ways for control decks. So I don't think we'll see a ton of play there. It's, it's not Delver. Uh, I also like the fact that you're not revealing a card anymore to flip it, that you're basically milling the card. And if you hit the instant sorcery, it flips. Uh, I like that better. I think it plays better with Delirium in this particular set. So we have Broken Concentration. So this is kind of your cancel version of Counterspell for this set. This time around, you're getting Madness tacked onto it, but Madness costs a blue and three. I feel like originally this was like Madness 2 blue, and that was just too good, and then they had to up it, and then they decided, well, instead of just doing two blue and one because it's already an instant, let's make it different and make it a blue and three. <laughs> so, I don't know. As far as standard goes, I'm not super excited about this particular card. I think that there's better counterspells out there. You're probably shopping around for a counterspell that actually exiles the card. That's going to become more important as this set moves into standard and as far as limited goes if you need a counter spell it is a hard counter it's going to be okay for you but the only thing is it's sending the card to the graveyard which isn't super good in this environment it might be okay and you might get away with it against certain decks in limited but at some point you're gonna get burned by that so i don't know not super excited if you need it it's there but i'm gonna try to avoid this Catalog. This is actually a reprint. This was originally printed back in Urza Saga, I believe, way back. And it's not a reprint. I think it was 8th edition, so it is actually modern legal already. But uh, this is a fine card. I mean, we don't get brainstorms and ponders anymore, right? <laughs> so this is kind of the closest thing you get to something like that. And I think it's still good enough to see standard play in a few different types of decks. And it's also great and limited. You'll be happy to play it. This is especially good in this world because the discard effect can be used to your advantage and i'm sure that's why they brought this card back it's a disadvantage that now is turning into advantage compelling deterrence so this is another kind of interesting card it's cheap it's a nice little tempo play but i almost rather not have the zombie and first you kind of feel like having a zombie is a benefit but then when you think about it I don't want my opponent discarding something for madness, and I don't want my opponent discarding something to get delirium. <laughs> so I kind of want to just play the tempo play. Uh, it, it's very interesting and makes you think about a card like this in a very different way. And I do like that design. I think that's very smart. Uh, so, hey, if you need it, it's going to be good for you and limited. You probably rather play it without the zombies, though. Confirm Suspicions. Well, here's another counter spell. This one's a hard counter for five, and this time you get three Investigates off of it. Uh, investigate's good. I like the clue tokens, uh, but you do want to remember that they do cost resources to turn in as well. So it's not just simply you're drawing cards as easily as it may feel. Uh, having said that, this has the same issue as the previous counter spell. You're countering something into your opponent's graveyard, and this time you're paying more to do it. So this one does not feel good to me. I, I don't think this will see any sort of play in standard. And again, I'm avoiding this as much as I can in limited. 
Daring Sleuth, which transforms into Bearer of Overwhelming Truths. Now, here's the issue with this card for me. I'm playing it for two. I get a 2-1. Uh, that's okay. Uh, now, if I can transform it, a Prowess 3-2 is very good and limited. I'd be happy with that. But I'm doing a lot of work to get this transformed. I'm playing it. I have to get myself a clue counter. Then I have to activate the clue counter. And then I get the 3-2 Prowess. Mm, it just feels like by that point it might not matter anymore. So, I don't know. I also feel the second ability also should have just been a curiosity instead of an investigate type ability. I know that they're trying to kind of showcase investigate, but I don't know. It just feels a little underwhelming. And don't get me wrong. I think clue counters are great. I think investigate is a great mechanic. I just feel like this one is asking a lot for you to get there. Now, my favorite part of this card is the art, which I think there's a lot of really cool stuff going on in there, and I think it's amazing. Uh, and it's not a horrible card in limited. Don't get me wrong. It's not unplayable or anything. But I just feel like, I don't know, I wanted a little more from this one. Next is Deny Existence, and now here's a counter spell that's exiling the card. That's very important. Now granted, it can only get creatures, but that's going to be just fine and limited. You'll be happy to play that in most cases. Uh, as far as limited goes, this is so far probably the best counter spell we've seen. Drownyard Explorers, uh, another limited card. Uh, this is just kind of a investigate sort of show card. Uh, nothing too exciting, nice little blocker. And you'll see that from Blue. Blue has a lot of high toughness creatures trying to slow down the game, trying to give you an opportunity to get your clue tokens out and draw some extra cards and be a little grindier in control style. So that's totally cool and this card plays into that. Uh, won't really do much outside of limited, but it'll be fine in that type of deck in limited. No corpse trawler. So first off, you look at this card and you say, "Wow, I don't want to spend four for a one-one." But look a little closer. You're still getting three three power toughness put on the board when you play this card, and the zombie token does not come into play tapped. So that's actually pretty interesting, and actually kind of pushes this card into limited playable. On top of that, you get the ability if you're in a black blue zombie build to give some zombies death touch. That's actually pretty decent. So this isn't for every deck, obviously, uh, but it's going to be just fine and limited, especially if you're in the zombie build. Engulf the Shore. So this is a nice little tempo play that kind of works as the blue version of a board sweep, and it only costs four. And of course, you can play it at instant speed. That's actually pretty good. So here's my thoughts on this one. Uh, you can play this in limited. It's going to be like a board sweep in the effect that if you're winning and you draw it, it's just going to sit in your hand. But that's okay because you're winning. And if you're behind, then it's going to buy you a little bit of time to hopefully draw into some more threats or maybe some more ways to defend yourself against your opponent kind of repopulating their board. So this could be quite good for you in limited. As far as standard goes, I think we'll see some play there. Just because it's so cheap, maybe this will be a card that will be sideboarded into some control builds. This will be a good card to sideboard in if your opponent's playing a lot of small aggressive creatures. By turn four, you can get this out and kind of reset the game. Buy yourself a little more time to get your control deck going. So watch for this to see some play, at least in those formats. Epiphany at the Drown Yard. Now, I kind of like the design of this card. I think this is very smart. So you glance at this, and first thing you notice that it's not really a factor fiction ability. This is still very good because of its casting cost. Now, look at it this way. If I have a little bit of mana to pump into this thing, I go ahead and I make the two piles of cards. One pile is going to go to my hand. One's going to go to my graveyard. So as I make my piles and as my opponent decides which pile to give me, there's a lot of decision making and really complicated decision making to go on. Because again, graveyard really matters. So you're going to have to kind of design your piles to split between half the cards are good going to your graveyard, half are good going to your hand, and that sort of thing. So I think it's actually a very smart card. And let's face it, if you have even just a little bit of mana to pour into this thing, even if your opponent's giving you the worst of the two piles, it's still 
card advantage. It's still cards that are going to your hand that are going to help you get further along in the game faster. So it's still a great card. Having said that, yes, play this in limited. You're going to be very happy with it. I mean, be careful and not to deck yourself, I guess, but uh, it's going to be great. And in standard, yes, this will see play in standard. I have no doubt this will definitely see play, especially in control decks. So keep an eye on this. This card will be out there. I uh, could maybe even dabble into modern. I would not be surprised. Erdwall Illuminator. Uh, this is a fun little card. It kind of doubles your clue tokens. And you do want to remember, though, at some point that's diminishing returns because you do have to pay resources to turn in those tokens. Uh, but for a long, limited game, especially if you have a board stall, this card's actually going to probably be pretty good for you. It's a small little flyer, but it can block things. And it's going to be worth running, especially if you have a slower control style deck in limited. Now, granted, you're probably not running this if you're playing an aggressive build, but if you're in blue, you're probably not playing an aggressive build in this set. Essence Flux. Now, here's another flicker effect. This one's pretty cheap, and if you flicker a spirit, you get a counter on it. So, yeah, I would run this in limited as long as I had a fair amount of Enters the Battlefield effects or a fair amount of spirits. It's a fine card. It's not super exciting, but it could save one of your creatures. It could give you a little bit of a bonus off an Enters the Battlefield effect, or it can make something bigger in some cases. So it has a lot of versatility, and I love flicker effects. I think they're really smart and fun, and I hope that this is a precursor to more to come in a future set. Fleeting Memories. And this is the first mill card we're going to look at today. And you'll notice there is a little bit of a mill sub-theme going on in blue. So it's interesting. Let's talk about that as a concept first. In limited, if I open some good mill cards and I decide I'm going to start drafting them, I'm gambling a little bit. I'm rolling the dice. And this is a set that my opponent's going to get advantage off of cards going to the graveyard. So milling might not seem like the best strategy, but you know what? Sometimes you're doing a draft and those cards just keep coming at you and it might be a little risky, but if it pays off, it's gonna pay off well. So I wanna say that I would totally avoid drafting the mill deck. If I'm in the right seat at the right time, I might go for it. I might lose, but I'll probably have fun doing it. So uh, it is a limited strategy. Don't get me wrong. It might be one you want to shy away from in some cases, but it is a limited strategy. As far as standard goes, now, mill decks and standard typically haven't really worked. However, you do want to remember Sphinx's Tutelage is still in the format. Now, Sphinx's Tutelage saw a little bit of fringe standard play when it came out uh, the first time standard was new when Magic Origins came out. And it could see some play as standard shifts this time around as well. It's getting a lot of tools to be good. This may be one of the best cards to work with Sphinx's Tutelage. So there could be a standard deck, even if it's fringe, even if it's just a temporary thing, that could show up out there again and might do quite well. So keep an eye on that. Having said that, talking about this card in particular, just like I said, if I'm in that mill strategy unlimited, I'll probably take it. If I'm not, I'm probably going to avoid this card. Forgotten Creation. Now, this card is interesting to me. So, in Limited, I don't mind paying 4 for 3-3 three, three with Skulk. I think that's actually very economical. It's also a zombie, so you have those synergies. But that effect seems very strong to me. And my upkeep, I may, I don't have to, but I may discard my cards in my hand, draw that many cards. Now, again, we've talked about it at length. Madness is a thing. Delirium is a thing. This plays incredibly well with that. And if I just want to rejuvenate my hand... I get to do that too. So that can be incredibly powerful. If your opponent doesn't do something about this card, you're going to win the game just off card advantage, if nothing else. So play this in limited. You're going to be very happy to do so. This is also going to see standard play, probably in a control build. It's just going to help them cycle through their deck, get to the things they need, and it's going to do a lot of work there. Potentially, I think this could still see some modern play. I realize it's a 3 3 body, but if you have a way to protect this thing, you only might need to activate it once and it could mean the game. So watch for this to see play across the board in a lot of different places. This is also a very fine commander card as well as a fantastic cube card. So I think this will see a lot of play all over the board. Furtive Humunculus. Uh, yeah, this is kind of the, hey folks, this is how Skulk works card. <laughs> Not too much more to say about it. It's a nice little Skulk creature at the two spot. You'll play it in limited, it'll be fine. 
Next is Giraffe's Masterpiece. Now, this one's a mythic, and I feel like this is a good creature. Now, blue control decks probably aren't looking for this type of thing because there's just better blue finishers out there for control, but there might be a deck that's looking to reanimate this out of the graveyard, and this actually could be quite good if you're paired with some good Delirium and Madness cards. So I would not count this out of constructed standard at this point. I uh, could see some play if that type of deck exists out there. Uh, other than that, it's going to be good for you in limited. You'll play this. It might not be a super big creature at first, but just the fact that it's a play that can come out of your graveyard if it gets milled or you end up discarding it or something like that. And it allows you to discard more cards, which hopefully will lead to more benefit to you then this guy should be very, very good. In the end of the day, you'll end up with a sizable flyer and maybe some advantages from Delirium and Madness. Uh, so yeah, this is kind of a no-brainer if I'm in blue and I have some things to make this card good. I'm going to play it in limited. Uh, could see some standard play too. Ghostly Wings. Now, this is an aura that I don't completely hate, and here's why. Uh, it is a discard outlet, so you can do some good things with that. And also, you have the opportunity to perhaps return the card to your hand if it gets targeted, so you don't completely get two for one for this. Uh, and it gives something evasion, which could be decent for you, so I'm not super excited about it, but I could maybe run a one of this in my limited deck. Next we have Gone Missing, and this is a fine limited tempo play. Not too much I can say about this. Cost 5, it does let you investigate, and it can be quite good and limited if you time this right. Next we have Invasive Surgery, and this is a cheap counterspell for sorceries, and you get a nice bonus with Delirium. Now this is very cheap. If you are up against some troublesome sorceries, you could sideboard this in Unlimited, but I do think this card will see a little bit of sideboard play in Standard, maybe even Modern and Legacy as well, just because it's so cheap. If you're ever in a situation where there's a sorcery that's really strong in the metagame, this could be a good sideboard card in any of those formats. Jace's Scrutiny. Now, this one's another limited card. This is kind of Blue's version of removal. Now, as you know, for the most part, Blue's removal is tempo, and this is actual removal removal. Now, it's not unconditional. You definitely need to use this as a combat trick to make it work, but it only costs two. You also get to investigate off of it, so I don't mind running one of these in my limited deck. All right, here he is, Jace Unraveler of Secrets. Now, I like his design. It's very sleek and it's very simple, uh, but still some powerful effects on there. Reminds me a little bit of Obnixilis' design in Battle for Zendikar. Now, having said that, he's maybe a tad pricey at five, but he's still doing a lot of good work. Now, he won't see probably modern or even legacy play just because of his casting cost, and he's competing against other versions of himself that are quite good, like Jace for its Prodigy, Jace the Mind Sculptor, the original Jace. So his appeal is going to be basically standard, uh, but I think he'll see play in standard, and I think he'll be good in those decks, especially control decks that are looking for some card draw. That Scry 1 draw card I think is a very good effect, and he does come in with 5 loyalty, and his minus 2 does help protect him as well as with a tempo play. So I think this will be good in standard. I think it will not see play in a variety of decks, but the right deck will want to play this. It's not going to be a Jace Ferns Prodigy that shows up in deck after deck after deck, but it will still see play, and I don't think I have to tell you in limited, yeah, this will be great for you in limited. Uh, play it, you'll be very, very happy. Just the Wind, uh, good limited tempo card, it's very cheap, and if you can play this for Madness, it's even cheaper. Uh, it's going to be just one of those kind of key cards that helps keep your blue deck together in Sealed or Draft. Lamplighter of Selhoff. Uh, I'm not super excited about these three five for fives we've been seeing in a lot of the sets lately. Uh, they always have some sort of benefit. This time, if you have another zombie, you get to loot. Now, looting is good and is actually very powerful. And if you can, I don't know, bounce this back and use it a couple times or something, it gets a little added value. But I'm not really super excited to play this for five, quite honestly, unless I'm really trying to synergize very strongly with zombies in my limited build. Uh, but for the most part, I'm probably skipping this one. 
Manic Scribe. So here's another one of the mill cards. Now, this is a very slow, grindy mill card, and here's the issue with it. Um, you're in a format where graveyard matters, and milling your opponent slowly just gives them more opportunities for delirium or for playing some crazy stuff out of their graveyard, and it's just kind of risky. So again, if I'm all in, and I have to be totally all in on that mill draft, maybe I'm doing this. Other than that, I'm really going to avoid this card quite strongly and limited. Now, again, standard, maybe, if that Sphinx's tutelage deck becomes a thing, this could be part of it. Nagging Thoughts. Now, I actually like this card. It's a very simple card. It's sorcery speed. I guess I kind of wish it was an instant, but uh, you also get a madness uh, possibility, so you could potentially play this as an instant. Uh, but yeah, you get to look at a couple cards, put one in your hand, one in your graveyard, helps you with your delirium effects and maybe just putting something in the graveyard that can be cast from the graveyard. And there's quite a few cards like that in the set. Uh, so yeah, I think this will be quite good in a lot of limited builds and it could even see some standard play. I think it helps that much with your deck manipulation. Nefalia Moondrakes. Now this is the blue intro deck card, and like most intro deck cards, it's a good limited card. This one's maybe a little better than a lot of the other ones. Uh, I like this a lot in limited. It's a little pricey, obviously at 7, but you get a 5-5 five, five flying body out of it, and on top of that, when it comes into play, it gives something else flying, and if it ends up in your graveyard, maybe it gets milled or you discard it or something, then you can still get a play out of your graveyard by paying 6 to give everything you have flying for a turn it's actually quite versatile so i like this in limited i'd be more than happy to play it in draft or sealed niblis of dusk i this is just a simple kind of flying prowess card for three it will be good for you in limited you'll be happy to play it it's a little more aggressive obviously it's better with more instants or sorceries or artifacts or anything that's not a creature but it's still going to be fine for you as a 2-1 flyer in limited. Ongoing investigation. Uh, this one I'm not real excited about. Uh, here's my issue with it. I don't really want to take turn two off to play this thing. And then, granted, if I can get some damage across that turn, I'm at least getting a clue token from it. But again, I get clue tokens when I deal damage to my opponent, but I still have to pay the mana to get card advantage out of them. It's just asking a lot for me at that point, and the second ability just kind of feels like a nombo with a lot of stuff that's going on in this environment. So I really don't see myself playing this in most cases in limited. Pieces of the puzzle. Now, this is a pretty cheap sorcery speed, mind you, uh, way to kind of start to dig through your library to get some more instant and sorcery cards. But maybe more importantly, the cards that you don't take end up in your graveyard, which again is going to be very important and very powerful in the set. So this is a great card. I love the casting cost. I love the effects. I love the fact that these cards will end up in your graveyard if you don't take them. Uh, this is very strong. And keep in mind, if you're just trying to populate your graveyard, you don't have to take any instant or sorcery. Since it's put up to two instant and or sorcery cards from among them in your hand the rest of your graveyard, you don't have to put any. So this can be actually very versatile and very good. You'll play this in limited and I think you'll be quite happy with it. And this will see standard play. This card I think could be quite a dominant force in the right build. Pour over the pages. Now here's another sorcery. This one interesting because it's letting you untap two lands. It's something we haven't really seen in a long time uh, because in the old days they did stuff like this and it was crazy broken but that was because the lands were crazy broken not so much that the effect was so i think this will be fine in this world but uh it's a good card it's a little pricey but this is kind of like the expensive draw some card spells that you see in every set and they're usually still very good and limited in this case you're also discarding a card which can be used to your advantage as well so i think this will be a good limited card this might see a little bit of fringe standard play in a control deck uh, just because it's going to help them see more cards and also leaves mana open for uh, protection so yeah watch out for this one i think we'll see a fair amount of play 
press the answers. Uh, this is just a simple kind of tap down spell, but it allows you to investigate. The only thing a little sad about this is I feel like this should be an instant. I like these spells a lot better when they're at instant, uh, but I am getting to investigate, so I'm okay with that. I don't mind playing uh, one of these in my limited deck. Rattle Chains. Now, this is the spirit kind of lord for the set, and if you open this pack one, you're probably going to get into the business of trying to draft spirits, and I don't think spirits are quite strong enough for standard. I don't feel like they've been pushed that much, at least not yet, uh, but I think they make a very fine limited draft archetype. So yeah, if you're playing this with some spirits, you're going to get some value out of it, and I think it will do well for you. Next we have Reckless Scholar. Now this was originally printed in Zendikar and it was reprinted in Conspiracy actually. Now it's a looter. Looters are very powerful. We know that. We've seen Jace Vern's Prodigy do some amazing stuff over the last few months by looting. Now as far as standard goes, right now this card is competing with Jace so it's probably not going to see a lot of standard play because Jace will be kind of the go-to card for this type of effect. But once Jace rotates out, I think this will see standard play and it will be in probably a fair amount of blue decks. It's a great card for any blue deck, but especially control. Uh, it's going to be very good for you in limited. You'll be very happy to play this in just about any limited build that has blue. Rise from the Tides. Uh, this one feels a little slow to me. Uh, just the fact that it's a little pricey. It's counting on you having instants and sorceries in your graveyard. And then you get the creatures coming into play tapped. And it all happens at sorcery speed. I guess if you're looking for the flavor of zombies, this is a great card because it is a very slow card to make work. <laughs> uh, not to say you can't make it work. If you have a fair amount of instants or sorceries and limited, it's probably worth tossing in there if you don't have anything better at the higher casting cost spots, but it's not going to be super exciting and it's going to be probably too much too slow, I think, for any deck in standard. Uh, this is an effect that maybe a control deck would want, but I just think there's better things they could be doing than this. Seagraph Scab. Cheap little blocker, and it's a zombie for synergy, and that's kind of all it is. So in limited, it's not always going to make your cut. In fact, a lot of decks probably don't want something like this, but if you're trying to slow down the game, or maybe you're just sideboarding the sand to deal with a fairly aggressive deck that's putting a lot of small creatures down early, then that's really its purpose. Silberland Snapper. Uh, I'm not super excited about this one. Here's another card that just feels, pardon the pun, a little slow because it is a turtle. Um, it costs six for a six six. It doesn't have any evasion, and it can only attack if you cast a non-creature spell that turn. Eh, I mean, granted, it can still defend, but at the point you're casting this for six, you're probably more concerned about creatures with evasion than you are anything that's on the ground because you're just later in the game. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'm not saying it's unplayable and limited. You might need a creature, so you play it. But I think for the most part, there's better things you could be doing. Silent Observer. Here's another card that's just meant to slow things down. And it will do that quite well. Uh, granted, this is probably more of a limited card. But, yeah, it's going to allow you to kind of grind out some of those investigate tokens. Get a little bit of card advantage maybe sideboard this in if you're dealing again with aggressive creatures early in the game um, but yeah other than that it's not always going to make your cut but that's kind of its role sleep paralysis so this feels a little bit like claustrophobia and yeah this is a really good removal card for blue maybe one of the best that we've seen uh, it's removal but it's keeping the card on the battlefield so you don't have to worry about the graveyard effects and these type of effects can be quite powerful. This is also at common, so you'll see a fair amount of these floating around in limited. Next we have Startled Awake, which transforms into Persistent Nightmare. Now, this is the card that you're gonna open pack one that's gonna make you want to draft the mill deck. And like I said, it's a little risky, but if you have this card, I'm probably going for it. Uh, this card's pretty powerful. If you're able to make your opponent mill 13 cards and then recur this and do it again you probably won the game in limited but again like i said mill is very risky in this format it's a gamble uh, but this helps your odds a little bit if you happen to have one of these again maybe this sees some standard play in a sphinx's tutelage deck 
Uh, we'll have to kind of see if that pans out. Uh, what's a little bit sad about this card for me, though, because I think also, too, the, uh, the art's really cool. It's a really interesting card. Uh, but it is a mythic, and I do feel it's a little bit of a niche mythic. Like, you might play it in your draft, and maybe there'll be a mill deck and standard for a short period of time. But other than that, I don't really know where this is going to see play beyond that. But... Eh, it is what it is. I, I'd rather see something like this at rare, but maybe that would have been uh, too much for limited. Stitched Mangler. Uh, so this is just a fine limited kind of zombie guy. It costs three for two, three, comes into play tapped, but it also gives kind of that Frost Titan tap down effect for another turn, which can be quite good, a nice little tempo play. So yeah, nothing to get too excited about, but it's a fine card for you in limited. Stitchwing Scab. Here's another fine limited card, uh, just like the last one. It's another zombie, so there's some synergy there. Uh, and for four, you get a nice little 3-1 flyer. And if it does end up in your graveyard, you still get a play out of your graveyard to bring it back. And it's a discard outlet at that point. So it's doing a lot of stuff that you want to be doing in this limited environment. Next, we have Stormrider Spirit. And this is kind of the obligatory 3 3 with flying for 5 that's been in every set lately. Uh, this time it has Flash attached to it and is a spirit. So, this will be great for you in limited. You'll be happy to play it. Uh, it's not a super exciting card, but it's still very good. Next, we have Thing in the Ice, which transforms into Awoken Horror. Now, I think there's a lot of appeal around this card. A lot of players want to get their hands on this, try to brew around it, find ways to get these counters off quickly use multiples of this card to just kind of overwhelm the opponent. And it is a very good card. I mean, if you can get this thing flipped, I mean, basically returning pretty much all creatures to their owner's hand, getting a 7-8 is pretty amazing. I don't know if it's going to be as fast as people want it to be, though. Now, obviously, this is going to be fine in a control deck, but you do have to ask yourself, does the control deck want this as a finisher, or does it want something like that Hexproof Sphinx from the previous block? Uh, that might just be a better finisher. So it kind of leaves me asking, where does this fit in standard? I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, maybe there is a deck that's going to emerge with this, or maybe it's a one of or two of this in the deck. Uh, but I just think there's different finishers out there that are going to work a little better. Uh, the biggest issue with this one is even though it's a big creature and it does kind of clear the board and give you some nice tempo, uh, it also is very vulnerable since it doesn't have hexproof. Uh, so just something to think about. I still think it's a good card. I think some folks are going to try to get it in standard. It might make it there. Uh, it's a bomb in limited. It's an absolute bomb. And more importantly, maybe, I think it's an amazing commander card. This will be really fun in commander. This is going to be good in cubes. Uh, so it's going to have a lot of versatility. And don't get me wrong, it's going to see a lot of play. Um, I'm just still not 100% sold on standard. Trail of Evidence. And this is kind of a non exciting enchantment for me. I don't like paying three for this. I put this into play, and then before I get any benefit, I have to cast a instant or sorcery, and then I get to investigate. So now I'm getting a token that's going to cost more mana for me to draw a card. <laughs> uh, no thank you. It's just asking too much for what it's costing. Uninvited Guest, which transforms into Unimpeded Trespasser. Now, if you can flip this card, it's a house. 3-3 three, three unblockable is annoying. It's a clock. Your opponent's going to have to deal with it. And it doesn't seem like it would be super hard to transform. It only costs 3. 2-2, two, two, it's Skulk. So just has to do damage to a player. Uh, I like this card in limited. I'm going to be very happy to play this in most cases. Throw a little equipment on this. It gets even better once you can flip it. And this could be really decent. So uh, watch out for this. Uh, maybe you could see some standard play in the right deck uh, just because it's something that your opponent's going to have to answer. Vessel of Paramnesia. So this is quite good. Here's an enchantment that is going to come into play for a couple mana. For one, then you can sacrifice it, which is going to do wonders for your delirium. And then on top of that, you have a few different options with this card. Most of the time, you're just going to mill yourself, try to get some stuff in your graveyard to kind of play with the graveyard mechanics. And then you also get to draw a card on top of it. This also doubles as a mill card if you happen to be in that limited mill strategy. Or this could show up potentially in that Sphinx's Tutelage deck that we've been kind of speculating on. So even if it 
doesn't exist in that deck, this will still see standard play because it's just so versatile and it's really giving you so much advantage. Feels a lot of ways like Forbidden Alchemy from the first Innistrad block. Maybe it's not quite as good as that card, but it's very strong, does very similar things. And yeah, I think this will see a good amount of play. Welcome to the Foal. This is the last card of the day. And I always like these Steel Creature effects. These always are much more powerful than you think they're going to be. Uh, so this one, no exception. I don't mind stealing a small creature for four because it could be a creature with a great ability. It could be something that my opponent's been uh, trying to build around or it could just simply help me get across a little bit of extra damage. It's a sorcery, so it kind of takes the creature permanently, I mean, barring any sort of flicker effect or something like that. And if you can play it for madness, you can get a bigger creature, which is, hey, even better. So yeah, I'm happy to play this in limited. I do think this could see some standard play as well. I think it's that good. So guess what? Having said that, we made it. We got through all the blue cards. So we'll be back tomorrow with all the black cards in the set. And like I said, we'll continue through the color pie and get you ready for that pre-release coming up next weekend. So until then, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks as always for watching. This video, like all my videos, is made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Even a donation of a dollar helps me to keep growing this community and creating better quality videos for all of you. Check out our Patreon page for exclusive giveaways and future goals for the channel. If you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the MTG news, spoilers, set reviews, product openings, or finance videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a good day.